Israeli troops began moving into Shiva Hospital, which they say sits atop a major Hamas headquarters in Gaza, and a large U.S. rally in the United States is presented a couple different ways. What's going on, everyone? Let's take a look at some updates as it relates to the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas. I'm recording this at 8.30 a.m. Central on Wednesday, November 15th, 2023. Over the past 24 hours, Israel released the names and images of two additional soldiers that they say were killed during ongoing operations in Gaza. And a correction to my video yesterday, I had stated that an Israeli soldier was killed during ground operations in Gaza, but it's more accurate to say that Noah Marciano was killed in captivity. So she was originally taken hostage by Hamas on October 7th during that original raid into Israeli territory. Then on November 13th, she first appeared in a video, a Hamas video, uh, where she gave her name, where she was from, personal information, things like that. Now, I have seen uh, claims from both sides about the cause of the death. Hamas says that she was killed by an Israeli airstrike. I've seen some unofficial statements from pro-Israeli accounts saying that she was executed by Hamas. I haven't seen anything officially put out by Israel at this point. What they're saying right now is that uh, the announcement of her death was based on intelligence and not the contents of that video that was released. Now, after a couple days of not updating their casualty statistics, the Gaza Health Ministry put out updated data saying that to date, since October 7th, 11,240 Palestinians have been killed, including 4,630 children and 27,490 wounded. Now, the Gaza Health Ministry is overseen by Hamas, so any information they release is going to be at the very least vetted by Hamas before it's released into the public. And, of course, worth noting that in, in none of these uh, data points put out by the Gaza Health Ministry do they ever call out the number of militants or Hamas fighters that were killed uh, in their count. Additionally, in the past 24 hours, Hamas says that they destroyed 22 vehicles and killed nine Israeli soldiers during the operations in Gaza. Again, as mentioned in previous videos, I've not seen the, the videos or images to support the claim of an additional 22 vehicles destroyed. Now, shifting over to the situation on the ground, looking at a map put together by War Mapper on Twitter, Israeli forces have now certainly completed their link up between forces moving into Gaza from the north and the south. And as of now, they have elements all around Shifa Hospital and have begun moving inside. Now, the Shifa hospital operation is likely to be the focus for both sides for quite a while here. And there's one point of clarification I think is worth making. As more and more people have started talking about this facility, I have heard people refer to it as sitting atop the Hamas headquarters. And I want to clarify, it is what Israel is claiming is that it is a headquarters facility, a significant underground military complex, but not the Hamas headquarters. And the reason I bring that up is I think there might be some ideas that once this hospital is taken and Israel goes down and clears out some of these areas that they say are under the hospital, that that's going to be it, that Hamas's headquarters is wiped out. But unless Hamas is different from every other insurgent or terrorist organization that's operated over the last 50 plus years, it is safe to assume that they have multiple locations all across Gaza and do not have all of their eggs in just one basket. Now, in terms of the actual operation at Shifa, the Israeli Defense Forces say that their team's going in, that are mostly military personnel, right? They're trying to clear this area, but they also include doctors and Arabic speakers. And they say that as those initial elements approached the hospital, they encountered explosives and a small arms fire. Uh, they say this resulted in a small arms engagement outside of the hospital uh, in which five Hamas members were killed. The last that I have seen from the IDF is that they have found weapons inside of the hospital, but no indications that the hostages were or are currently being stored there. Additionally, it sounds like Israeli forces are in the basement of the Shifa hospital searching for some of those tunnel networks that they have said are there. Uh, as of now, as of this recording, I've not seen any images or videos released by Israel uh, to substantiate the claims that they've been making about the hospital for, for some time here. Now, from the Palestinian side here, we've got a Telegram channel called Gaza Now. They put out, quote, Hours have passed since the Israeli occupation forces stormed Al-Shifa Hospital in Gaza. The Israeli occupation soldiers stormed all the patients' rooms and broke into the hospital's basement without finding anything except medical equipment. The incursion is still continuing amid heavy gunfire by Israeli occupation soldiers without any clashes, in addition to tanks firing shells from time to time. Israeli occupation soldiers are trying to harass the doctors because they refuse to deal with them after failing to find any evidence indicating that the Palestinian factions are using the hospital for military matters. So we're going to, you know, so Hamas is, is sticking to kind of their side. that There's nothing underneath the hospital. Israel is sticking with their side that there is a major facility under the hospital. I imagine one way or another, we're going to get the, the full answer here shortly. Now, it's worth noting that this operation kicked off shortly after an announcement put out here in the United States, which 
I think a lot of people viewed as a green light for Israel to move forward into Shifa. National Security Spokesperson John Kirby said yesterday, quote, I can confirm for you that we have information that Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad use some hospitals in the Gaza Strip, including Al-Shifa, and tunnels underneath them to conceal and support their military operations and to hold hostages. He added, Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad members operate a command and control node from Al-Shifa in Gaza City. They have stored weapons there, and they're prepared to respond to an Israeli military operation against that facility. Now, when pressed on how the United States knows that and, and where that information came from, where that intelligence came from, uh, Kirby said they're not diving into those details. They're not going to provide that information publicly, which I understand how that can look on the surface, but that's kind of standard as well. When, when you have a piece of intelligence like that, it, it's not automatic to just release it into the public. It could burn sources and, and prevent you from gathering similar intelligence in the future. So um, again, we'll, we'll see as Israeli forces continue movement through the hospital. Now, Hamas put out a statement as well saying that, quote, we strongly condemn and reject the claims made by the Pentagon and the White House, which repeat the lies propagated by the Zionist occupation that Hamas uses hospitals to hide captured Israeli soldiers or as command centers. They added, we reiterate our call for the United Nations to establish an international committee to inspect all hospitals in Gaza and expose the falsehoods in the occupation's narrative, a narrative endorsed by its ally Washington. The United States bears direct responsibility for enab enabling Israel's genocidal war on Gaza. We've talked about this a couple times before, but it is, it is constant. Every time Israel does something in Gaza, Hamas, uh, Hezbollah, Iran, other groups all around the world, they point to the United States and say the United States is either directing or at the very least facilitating what is happening here. So um, no shock that as this hospital operation kicks off, Hamas points the finger at the United States, which, look, uh, it kind of lines up with the U.S. putting that information out and then Israel shortly thereafter giving it the green light. Now, a call for the United Nations to have an international committee inspecting hospitals in Gaza, I mean, sounds like a pretty good idea. I, I'd be interested to hear what the pushback is on that one, other than, you know, it's coming from Hamas, so some folks will just say, can't do that. I just, look, Israel is being held to an incredibly high standard when it comes to proving any claims they're making around things like this, like like headquarters under hospital facilities. You can say that that's right or you can say that that's wrong. It's just kind of, it is what it is right now. And if that's the case, you know, if, if, if Israel is so confident in, in some of these claims, I think they would gain a lot of credibility pulling in a third party of sorts, like the United Nations, to come in and conduct those types of investigations. Now, I got it. it it's a war zone right now, but I don't know. It doesn't seem like the worst idea I've ever heard. Now, here in the United States, there's a pretty significant rally in Washington, D.C., that was presented a bunch of different ways by various media outlets. And I just thought it was interesting to bring up how this rally was being portrayed. It was, you know, big picture. We've had a lot of pro-Palestinian rallies at, at various points all across the country and around the world, of course, right? Um, this, from what I've seen, is the largest, what I would say, pro-Israel rally in the United States since October 7th. Uh, varying numbers there. On, on the low side, I heard people say tens of thousands. The highest number I saw was 300,000. It'll be called out in one of these quotes. But either way, it was, it was, uh, it was a large number. So moving through how this rally was described, NBC called it a rally to condemn anti-Semitism against a backdrop of growing bias incidents nationwide. Uh, the Israeli publication Haaretz called it a rally in support of Israel's war on Hamas. Al Jazeera focused on a no ceasefire chant saying that many of those in attendance rejected calls to end the war. The Associated Press said thousands uh, at the rally crying never again. CNN talked about the details spoken to by the families of hostages held by Hamas. Uh, the Times of Israel, this is where the 300,000 number came from, uh, said that 300,000 were there at a rally for the release of hostages, adding never again is now and slamming pro-Palestinian protesters for echoing Hamas's cry. And then NPR had a short segment calling it a pro-Israel march designed to speak out against Hamas and the October attack on Israel. The reason I wanted to highlight this was just to show how a singular event in the United States was covered differently by so many different outlets. And the majority of these are, are U.S.-based publications and organizations, and they're not drastically different in what they're reporting. It's just the headline. Each one of them tends to focus on a different aspect of what the rally was actually about and what the people there were in support of or against. Now, shifting outside of Israel for a moment, the Houthis in Yemen announced that they will target any Israeli ship in the Red Sea, and they put out this graphic warning Israel of that threat. And yesterday, the Houthis also announced that they launched a series of drones and missiles towards Israel. 
Uh, this was one of those announcements where they put it out and then nothing happened. Like there were no interceptions announced. There were no strikes announced. Uh, and the Houthis have done this a couple times where they've put out announcements of, of launches, but then there's nothing that follows. Uh, but it does sound like, uh, you know, 24 hours later, it does sound like at least one of those incoming missiles or drones was intercepted by Israel over the Red Sea and successfully shot down. Now, shifting over to Syria, uh, the U.S. released footage of the strike they conducted a few days ago in retaliation for attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria. This is the footage here. This comes alongside a new story or just kind of an updated tally is actually the better way to put it, saying that now nearly 60, 60 U.S. troops have been injured across 56 total attacks uh, in Iraq and Syria since October 17th. But that's all I got for now. Now, we made some changes to the Substack. It now houses ad-free, sponsor-free videos in addition to the weekly sit reps. Link is in the description below. But thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.